Let's take a look at Form Z's preferences. And you can get to that on the Mac in two different locations. Under the Form Z main pull down menu here, we have preferences. And on Mac and Windows, under the edit menu at the very bottom, we also have a link to get to the preferences dialog box. When we open up the preferences, we have several main categories and subcategories. We're not going to go through every one of these right here in the very beginning, but we are going to hit a few of the highlights. The first one is whether or not to use a custom preference file. Now, Form Z has the ability for you to save custom user preferences. And this is not to be confused with things that are actually in the project settings. There's a separate dialog box for that under the file pull down menu. If I go into there real quick, take a look at what's in there. We'll cover this one in an additional video, but project settings are on a project by project basis. So it includes units, appearance, lights, layers, objects, and so on. Things that have to do with each project file on a project by project basis. So you can imagine, for example, you're working on something at the city scale and you might be working in imperial units and you might be working in feet and you probably wanna use architectural dimensioning. Now your next project may be a piece of jewelry and you may wanna work in metric and millimeters for that one. So on a project by project basis, you can set up these settings here which are completely different than preferences. And by custom preferences, what could be included in that would be things like palette locations. So for example, maybe I always want the inspector palette open and I don't use the objects palette, so I wanna close that, but maybe I want to open up the information management palette and keep that up here at the top, but collapse it. So if I go into the preferences now and I were to save a custom preference file and I'm going to create a new one and I'm gonna save that somewhere on my computer, now what would happen is every time I open Form Z, those palettes are gonna be in the exact same location as I saved them in. Next in the list here is whether or not we want Form Z to ask us to save that preference file. There's a lot of times when we change a preference and we don't think about saving this right away in this preferences dialog box. So when we quit out of Form Z, it will ask us if we wanna save that preference file, and then we can choose to or not, which is a great option because again, we don't always remember to do that right when we change a preference. The other thing we can do here is modify our startup action so that it always opens a brand new project, could give us an open dialog box or by selecting none, which is the default, it shows us the Form Z splash screen, which gives us all of these options in the same place. The last section in this first category is you can actually modify the number of processors that Form Z uses, and that'll leave some overhead processing power for other applications that you may be running at the same time. I tend to just leave it on use all and let the computer handle all of that, but you have a manual override. The next one I want to bring up here is the interface category. You have the ability to turn tooltips on and off, which are the little pop-ups that show up when you're hovering over a tool and it tell you what it is. And you can change the delay of the pop-up. You can change the colors used in lists. So for example, over here on the right-hand side in our layers and lights and views palettes, you can see every alternating row is a slightly different color. This is where that is controlled. You can also change the icon saturation and color intensities and modify the look of the user interface a little bit. We can also change the fonts in our dialog box and we can change the order of the buttons if you're seeing the order of the buttons to be a little different than what you would care for. In the palette subcategory of the interface category, there's a couple things in here that are pretty useful. Obviously you can change the font, but a couple of potentially useful options here are clicking in the empty space of a list creates a new entry. I'm gonna turn that on for a moment. And the other one I'm gonna choose here is don't pop up tool palettes on hover and show you what those are for a moment here. So if I go over here and I just click in the layer palette, it will automatically create a new layer instead of having to click on the plus button. So that's what that first option did. The other option that we turned on was when you hover over these tools, now we don't get the flyout menus automatically. You have to click on the tool to get the flyout palette to show up. So if you don't like those tear off palettes showing up automatically when you're just over here hovering, you may wanna turn that on. The next category is updates. You can tell Form Z how often you'd like it to check for updates. You have a few options in there. Now, Form Z will not ever automatically install an update, but it will let you know if an update is available, and you can change the frequency at which it checks for that. 
The project category has a couple of options here for default working units. So if you're always working in metric or if you're always working in imperial, you may want to select that. And you can also change the default numeric accuracy options in there as well. The other thing you can do is tell Form Z to always use a template project when you're creating a new project. So what is a template project? A template project is a Form Z file somewhere on your computer. Now, it could contain geometry in it. Most likely it won't. But it could also have, for example, a different set of layers that are already set up. It could have additional lights. It could have some preset views. It could have a custom reference plane or a different grid layout, things like that. So if you're constantly working in Form Z and you're always changing a bunch of things, you may want to just set all those things up once in what you would call a template file, save that file, and then come into the Preferences dialog box here in the Project category and choose that file from wherever it lives on your hard drive to always use as the basis for new projects. You can also tell Form Z whether to keep backup files or not. Backup files are separate from the main project files where the main project files will have a .fmz file name extension. Backup files will have a .bak file extension. That is a nice little bit of insurance. If something were to go wrong with your main file, you have a backup file that is very recent behind the main project file. You can also turn on project and or rendering autosave. To enable project autosave, click here, and you can tell it how often you would like it to automatically save a new file. This is great for those of you who are coming from other applications that already work like this. Otherwise, Form Z is not automatically writing those changes to disk every time you do them. So Form Z is looking for direction from you, whether you want to do it manually or automatically, and you can tell it where to autosave those files. It could be in the project folder itself, it could be in the user's document folder, or it could be in a custom location. You can also tell it to use incremental file names when it does that, so it's not overriding the last one that it saved. Under the rendering autosave, you have the ability to automatically save a rendering upon completion. Now, a rendering is a specific kind of display type, so that would be for example, a render zone rendering up here. And we can automatically choose to save those upon completion in these different bitmap file formats. And you can also change a few of the other options in there. Again, you can choose the destination of where you would like those to go. File search paths is a useful preference to know about because Form Z wants to know where you're keeping externally referenced assets to your project file. So we mentioned a minute ago about the Form Z template file. That Form Z template file could include custom materials. Materials are not embedded in the Form Z file. It would look externally for the bitmaps that would make up those materials, which would include the color maps, the bump maps, the reflection maps, the transparency maps, things of that nature. So if you want Form Z to automatically link those to your project, you need to save a file search path for Form Z to correctly always link those files up. And that's very easy by hitting the plus button, choosing that location on your hard drive, and then you're done. So that concludes our tour of the Form Z Preferences dialog box. Thanks for watching, and if you'd like to get notified when new videos are released on this channel, click the subscribe button below and click the notification bell icon to get a notification when new videos are released. See you in the next one.